In this video, we'll learn a little bit about two variable equations and their graphs. We will plot the graph of two different equations. First of all, the solution of a two variable equation is an ordered pair. It's a point that makes the equation true. Now, when we're finding solutions to a two variable equation, it differs from finding the solution to a one variable equation. When we found the solution to a one variable equation, we found generally that there was only one answer. But when we do two variable equations, we're going to find that there's an infinite number of points that are solutions to these equations. The graph of a two variable equation is a set of all of those solutions displayed in the xy plane. So, since there are an infinite number of solutions, we obviously can't find every single one, so we find uh, enough of them so that we identify the pattern of the graph. We plot some of those points and we identify the pattern and kind of fill in the holes. The y-intercept of a graph, if it exists, is the point on the graph where the x value is 0. It's the point on the graph where the graph crosses the y-axis, the vertical axis. Let's start with an example. This is a two variable equation and the solutions will have the form x comma y. An ordered pair. We put the x value in the first position and the y value in the second position. Now the first thing we're going to do is just find some solutions to this equation. There are actually an infinite number of x comma y points that solve this equation. We're going to find enough that when we plot the graph we'll see the pattern and be able to fill in the holes. So in the table here I have given some x values and some y values. When we're given an x value we can plug it into the equation and solve for the unknown y value. When we're given a y value, we can plug it into the equation and solve for the unknown x value. Let me just copy down the equation here, 3x minus 5y equals 15. Now for this first point here, we've given that x equals 0, so I go to my equation, I plug in x equals 0, we don't know y, but I can solve this equation for y. 3 times 0 minus 5y equals 15. That tells me that negative 5y equals 15, dividing both sides by negative 5. So I know that y would have to be negative 3. So if x equals 0, then y equals negative 3. So a point on this graph, x is 0, comma, y is negative 3. And this is the y-intercept. It is the point on the graph where the y x value is 0. It's the point on the graph where the graph crosses the vertical axis. In the next point, we're given the y value is 0, and we don't know the x value. So I know that y equals 0, and I need to solve for the x value. I plug in y equals 0 to my equation, so 3x minus 5 times 0 equals 15, and I solve this equation for x. So 3x equals 15, dividing both sides by 3, we get x equals 5. So if y equals 0, then x equals 5. So when in the table, when y was 0, x is 5. This tells me the point x is 5, comma, y is 0. That's another solution to this two variable equation. It's another point on the graph of this equation. Similarly, we can go through and solve when given x is negative 2, find y. When given y equals 1, solve for x. When given x equals 3, solve for y. When given y equals negative 4, solve for x. I'll go ahead and quickly do those and get the answers. Given x equals negative 2. When x is negative 2, y equals negative 4.2. Given y equals 1. 
when y equals 1, x is approximately 6.7. given x equals 3. If x equals 3, then y equals negative 1.2. If y equals negative 4. If y equals negative 4, then x is approximately negative 1.7. Now we know six points on the graph of this two-variable equation. We can take these six points and graph them in the xy plane, and that will give us a pretty good understanding of what the graph of this equation looks like in general. Now, from these six points that we found to be solutions, we're clearly seeing a pattern. It looks like this graph is a straight line that slopes upward. And in fact, that's true. Let's do another example. This time, I have the equation y equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 3. Again, I want to complete the given table of values. We're given x is negative 5, so I go to the equation and I plug in negative 5 for x. Then we'll plug in negative 4, then negative 3, and so forth. I'll go ahead and quickly uh, fill in these y values. So we've completed a table of values that gives us 11 different solutions to this two-variable equation we now have 11 points on the graph of this equation. If you fill in the details of what this graph would look like, it travels upwards and back downwards like so. It kind of looks like an upside down U, and we'll learn later in the course that this is actually called a parabola.